Hi everyone. I'm coming to you from my home office today. Um, like a lot of us who have been working at home um, during this time in uh, April of 2020. And today I thought about sharing something a little more personal around behavior and specifically around behavior in connection with autism spectrum. Um, and, and I thought about this because when we talk about social isolation or social distancing as it's called now, it's really, really, really hard for some of us or many of us, but it's not hard for others because some people think differently and we want them to learn to be social as I've always, always pushed, but we have to start thinking about not fixing them. And so how do we accept them for whom they are and, and really balance that? And some of the behaviors that we get from that population can be escalated by our demand to think that we can normalize and want them to be more like us. So as we struggle with this kind of antisocial world that we're in right now, it's real hard. But I want you to think about what it's like for some people whose cognitive uh, makeup, if you will, um, makes it hard for them to socialize in the first place. And even though they want to socialize, it's a little more difficult. And perhaps they're even very comfortable with this right now because there isn't that pressure to be socializing and doing things that they really prefer not to do. In this video, I'm going to share with you a rather personal video that I shot uh, a few years back, and it involves my adult son. My adult son was diagnosed with what we were calling Asperger's syndrome many years ago, um, basically um, high-functioning autism spectrum disorder. And he was, and that was around 13 or 14 years old. He's now 36, so he's a grown man and quite able to take care of himself. But yet when I shot this interview years ago, I did it off the cuff without telling him what I was going to ask him and without um, giving him any background. And I said, can I ask you a few questions? And he said, sure. So he sat down and I asked him questions. And you'll see in the video he answers these questions quite honestly. And I really felt that at this time of what we're going through right now, it was a time to share this with you. You mentioned earlier having um, Asperger's syndrome. Yeah, which I never knew until 2011. The so, summer, no, 2012. So, which you were already an adult. Yeah. When, um, when you found this out. And, and of course, these are diagnoses that weren't around when you were a little kid. So it wasn't until later that that was actually discovered that, I mean, oh, this is who you it are. It wasn't quite so well known, but, uh, but the diagnosis was first discovered in 1947 in Austria by a man named Dr. Asperger's. Okay, so you've learned this. Yes, I've done a little research on it. Do you, do you agree that that's a diagnosis, if you will, that... Um, it's you? Yes. When I, first, when I first read about what Asperger's is, I thought I was reading my own biography. Really? It described just about every behavior I have engaged in unknowingly. And tell us a little more about that. See, being, being quiet, not interacting with a lot of people, um, just, see, no, ah, uh, oh, sorry, my mind's It's okay, you don't have to quote it from the book. But it's so, but, so when you learn more, you're doing a lot of research about Asperger's syndrome itself. So just by reading that, you said, it sounds like I'm reading my own biography. That is such a powerful statement. It's, it's, my, it's mainly it's the social part. It explains why I, why I never fit in with the kids in school, you know, why, why I had a hard time interacting in groups. And, and most recently, when I, was, when I was clubbing for the first half of my 20s, for the majority of my 20s, you know, I, I had such a hell of a time trying to trying to interact with people, especially the women, you know, and I just couldn't, I, I thought, I, I kept talking up as just shyness, you know, or that I'm just afraid to talk with strangers, you know, but, but once I learned what it really was, you know, it all made sense. Has that made it a little more peaceful for you? Yes, it did. From that point on, I no longer beat myself up over it. I realize now it's, it's, it's not my fault, you know, I'm just, by nature, I'm just, I'm just not a social person. And you're okay with that? Yeah, it is what it is, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just got to find a way to live with it. So having people try to make you social is not a good idea? No, <laughs> no. That's, that's going to create a hell of a lot of problems. So, you're just going you're to put that kid in a world of pain. So you would say don't force people to be social? No, 
don't. So if a little kid wants to read at recess time, if it's he want, okay. I mean, if he wants to sit in a corner by himself and read his book, if that's his decision, let him. My name is Ronald Bath, and I approve this message. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. I speak and consult on school behavior, and I love to help districts solve some of these problems. See you next time.